Okay, so the aim of the project was to create a final year project which showcased all my skills and I thought the way to do that would be to create a realistic animation which showed different movements. Uh, I wanted to create a story rather than individual animations because I thought that would give the whole thing some cohesion and therefore I wouldn't get bored in doing individual shots. I would have a goal to strive for. So for the final year project, I wanted to showcase all my skills that I've developed over the last four years. So that would be the undergraduate and the masters. And I thought to do that, I would make a story. And that would include everything from the story, from the modelling, from the texturing, to the animation, and to trying to create fluid, fluid camera movement. And to do that, I basically had to build an environment first. And I wanted my environment to be semi-realistic. I wanted it to look very, very pretty, but easy to render as well. So from the start of the final year project, I knew what I wanted to do straight away. I had a clear plan of what I wanted to do. This was because of the pre-visualisation I made, and the final project resembles the pre-visualisation. I believe the choice in my project is very useful for what I want to do in the industry. So basically in industry, I want to work on the third floor of frame store, and that's basically pre-visualisation. So everything I've done in my final year project resembles what happened in pre-visualization so that's the storytelling aspect that's the animation that's the world building that's the texturing modeling camera movement everything so i did a lot of research but i did a lot of research during the pre-visualization stage where i came up with my idea and to come up with the idea i was basically inspired by a lot of show reels a lot of industry work a lot of game trailers a lot of past unit work as well uh, one or two big inspirations was Zelda Breath of the Wild and a Blender open movie called Spring and that included a lot of nature and I wanted to include that in my work as well. So during the research I knew I needed to get reference videos because A I didn't have enough references in my past work and B I wanted to create a lot more realistic movements and for that I needed reference videos and I thought I could do that myself and create them myself. That way I could have the exact movements which I want and I can have the exact angle that I want as well and that would make it a lot easier for me to animate. So in my environment I have a lot of objects and each object does feel like it's meant to be there and that's because I put a lot of research into it. So I basically researched what each object should look like and I made a lot of mood boards from it. When finishing each animation I had to go back and research how to do the camera movement so I looked at a lot of documents a lot of videos and a lot of movies to how and why cameras should move this and a certain way so for my animation a lot of the camera is moving left that and that's because of the character walking in a certain direction if the camera was to pan right it would not make any sense and it would confuse the audience I feel like my work is good enough for industry because when I did create some of the animations such as running and walking up the stairs it does look exactly the same as the reference frame the biggest failure which I had to work around was the rig for the boy and basically I made a bag for the boy but parented it to the to the kids hips and because of that there were scaling issues and therefore I could not scale him up or down so therefore what I had to do was scale the environment up towards him which created a massive massive file and because the environment was so big when I tried to create a light source, I would have to use extreme numbers just to get a sort of good looking animation. And I think that's, that messed it up a little bit. I personally feel like there's a lot of successes in this animation. One is the animation itself. Because I use a lot of reference videos, I created a fluid and quite effective animation. I got the weight right, I got the timing right, and it looked very, very fluid. So I was very, very happy with that for most of my animations. Another was the actual environment itself. In the, I had a clear idea of what I wanted in my head, and I was able to build that in the world. I was also very happy that my animation looked a lot like the industry standard for pre-visualization. It clearly showcased what I wanted in the story. It clearly showcased the movement. So during the industry talks, when a lot of the graduates came in, an uh, animator came in and said that the camera should be part of the story and it should be another character. I feel like my camera work is a lot more fluid 
and it showcases the story really well. But some scenes which use the camera and it looks a lot more dynamic because of the movement. Because I want to go into pre visualization a lot of my work is good enough for it. But if I want to go into movies and into TV shows, I feel like my work can still be a lot better. For one example, my tiger movement is not as good as movie standard or TV show standard. Animals have always been my weakness. And in this project, I wanted to improve myself, which I feel like I have but I feel like I can become a lot, lot better. I'd say the biggest challenge I had in the final year project was the boy getting chased by the tiger. That was a very, very difficult scene for me. First, because I had never really done a run before for a kid, and this was the first time I did a tiger run as well, and I wanted to create the movements looking realistic. I didn't want just the boy and the tiger to just run straight. I wanted them to like merge a little bit and have little obstacles along the way. So, I wanted to create a realistic movement in the boy doing a roly-poly and then jumping in the ditch and jumping out and I wanted the tiger to look at its prey and assess the situation and I think this was the biggest challenge because I just didn't know how to do it so this was by far the longest scene I did if I did have more time for the project I would have liked to make a more sci-fi looking uh, video so I would have liked the kid and the lady to come in on a futuristic bike coming onto the temple shrines that would have been nice but a model like that would have taken a long time to complete just from the past when we had the advanced modeling module also i would uh, like to create more animal movements so for example when the kids walking up the stairs and into the temple i would have liked to have birds in the background or maybe another animal just on the rocks this would have been nice and added a little more variation into the animation